this second part of 11F, we're going to be looking at finding the area under a transformed function. So our definite integral is defined with f of x, and that finds the area between a and b, our two terminals. Um, but what happens if we do some transformations to f of x? So we've worked with transformations before, and here are our transformations for f of x. We've got our dilations and rotations um, in the vertical direction here by a factor of a from the x-axis. Uh, the other changes that we make to our y values are the addition of a c, so moving the whole graph, translating it up or down. And then we have our transformations uh, related to our x values. So this is a dilation or a reflection um, of our x values, so dilation by a factor of 1 on n from the y-axis and a reflection across the y-axis. And this, of course, is our translation left or right. And with the x changes, transformations, in the function notation, the n, we actually dilate by a factor of 1 on n. And can I just reiterate here, um, if you are asked for a transformation in the exam, don't just write dilation 2. This section in here is extremely important. You need to say dilation by a factor of and then the number not just dilation a okay and be also careful about when you're talking about reflection you reflect across an axis not in an axis you reflect across an axis okay so make sure that you're getting those correct anyway let's have a look at what happens when we do some transformations of functions and the changes that that makes to the area under the curve so here are the properties of integrals that we looked at last time and this time we're going to think of it in terms of area under a curve. So the integral from a to a of f of x is no area at all. It's as thin as a point and a point has no width and so the area under that curve is zero. For our integral from a to c, from a to c, the area under the curve can be split into two sections if B is in between A and C. So that kind of makes some sense. So if you want the integral all the way from A to C, you find the integral from the area from A to B, which is this first one, and then the area from B to C. This third one we looked at before in a previous video, but I want you to think about this K now as a dilation of f of x. So this is what our a would have been in our function out the front. So this is in fact a vertical dilation in a yeah, vertical dilation by a factor of k this way. So what it actually means is so if we start with our function down here and we find the area under that curve and it's equal to something, whatever it is, here it is here, this particular er um, area here. If we then multiplied all of our y values by k, what you end up with is stretching the graph up this way, and all of the y values move in the same proportion. So instead of a, a value here being c, the value is now kc. So our original area under our curve without the dilation it's this little green bit here and when we stretch it up it becomes this large green bit here and you can see that the area is increased and it actually increases by a factor of k right let's look at a couple more properties this next property is also a dilation but this time we're dilating horizontally by a factor of 1 on n. And so what we do is we kind of grab this end of the function, or actually the whole function, and stretch it out this way. So it's easier to see what happens if you use a, a straight line as the function. So our original integral from a to b has this yellow area. And if I stretch it by a factor of n this way, and I've chosen a as 0 so that it stays in the 
in the same spot. If we stretch it this way, what you get is a much larger area and the length of this rectangle is B minus A and the length of this rectangle is now much longer. But having the dilation go horizontally means that you also need to change your top terminal. And so what you're looking for is the factor that you multiply the terminal by here in has to be the same factor that you're dilating your x values by. Okay, so it has to be one on n here and it's the n here. So if this is x on five, this will be 5b. So they need to be reciprocals of each other. So when I say the same factor, what I'm, what I'm talking about is that this needs to be the same as your factor. So you're dilating by a factor of 1 on n. I hope that's clear. We'll come back to this anyway because there was a VCAR question that involved this. We'll look at it in a minute. Um, this next one has our function being translated up or down and if you work through the um, integral calculus for it you'll see that what you end up with is a common factor of c outside of b minus a. In reality what you've got, if you've got a plus c, you take this area here and this function shifts up by c units so it literally gets lifted upwards and you get this gap underneath and the gap that you get underneath is in the shape of a rectangle and if we work out the area of this rectangle which is length which is b minus a times width which is c you get this bit here so in this situation i've added c so i'm actually adding a rectangle underneath if my C was negative, I would be taking that amount of area um, off from underneath the function. The final transformation to look at for a function is a horizontal translation. So what you can imagine is here's our function, here's our area, and we pick the whole thing up and we shift it left or right. And so if we're shifting it left or right, the A and the B values are going to change as well as it were by the same amount um, as the k value. So if I am adding k, then I'm moving k units in the negative direction of the x-axis or moving left. So the, uh, the value for a will actually come back and the value for b will actually come back. So what you're looking for here is that here we've got plus k and here and here we have minus k. Let's have a go at some questions. So we've seen this sort of question before. If the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x is equal to 2, find the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 f of x. So this is now a dilation factor. So we know we're going to triple the area. So it's just 3 times the area which gives us 6. You may as well do it the other way, it's not really much difference. But this second one over here, the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x plus 1, this plus 1 is giving us that rectangle underneath, and it is 1 unit high, and it is 2 units wide. So this can save you a little bit of time thinking about it this way. So you can just go straight to your integral plus width times height to give you your answer straight up. Now let's have a look at a VCAR question. So this last example is just like a past VCAR question. So here it is. Let f be a differentiable function defined for all real x where f of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in the domain 0 to a, which means that um, the function stays above the x-axis for all values of x between and including 0 and a. So we don't have to worry about negative area at all. If the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx is equal to a, then 2 times the integral from 0 to 4a 
of f of x on 4 plus 3 is equal to, and then it was a multiple choice question from there. So I haven't put the multiple choice options here because I just want you to have a think about what kind of transformations have they got happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and color code some stuff up because, you know, if you haven't already recognized, I like a bit of color coding. Um, but that too is important. The divide by 4 and the 4 in front of the A are also important. And this plus 3 is also important as well. So I'll give you a minute or so, pause the video, to have a go and see if you can work out what this area is, um, and then I'll put the answer up for you. So press pause now. Okay, so here we go. So we can split the integral into the section with f of x and the plus 3 remembering that the 2 at the front of that integral is also multiplying the 2 times the integral of 0 to 4a to 3. And so this is a dilation by a factor of 2, so we double our area. This is a dilation by a factor of 4, so we then increase it by a factor of 4 as well. So that gives us 2 times 4 times a. We can work out our integral here by finding an antiderivative and substitute in, or we can recognize that this is in fact going to be a rectangle that we've shifted up. And if we work through that algebra, we end up at 32a. So thinking about it in a different way, if we have two times, we start with the area of f of x, which is a, and then we multiply it by 2, we multiply it by 4, and then we add that rectangle. And in fact, we're adding two of the rectangles because we've got the two out the front. And the height of the rectangle is 3, and the width of the rectangle is the difference between those two. When you go through and simplify that, you get to 32a. I think you'll agree thinking about it in terms of transformations is a much quicker method of solving that question.